Good evening. I would like to welcome you to this YouTube premiere of our carol service. Due to the pandemic, we have compiled a selection of special carols sung by a church choir in the past years. John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Beloved in Christ, let us prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels. And in our hearts and minds, let us be ready to go up to Bethlehem to see the child in the manger, the Savior who is born. Let us hear from the Holy Scripture the story of the loving purpose of God from the first days of our disobedience until the glorious redemption brought us by the child who was born in Bethlehem. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the love that you showed us in Christ Jesus, who came into the world 2,000 years ago to live among us and to die on the cross of Calvary so that we can have eternal life. We pray that you would speak to us afresh as we hear the story and message of Christmas through the carols and the lessons. Open our hearts and our minds to hear the good news of the birth of the Savior. Bless this evening that we spend together in your presence. This we ask in the name of the Prince of Peace. The child was born in Bethlehem, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The traditional carol that we will now sing is a translation by Frederick Oakley of the Latin carol Adeste Fidelis, generally accepted to have been written by the English hymn writer John Francis Wade in about 1743. Let us all join together in singing, O Come, Only Faithful.
tells sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise and that his seed will bruise the serpent's head. Genesis chapter 3 verses 8 to 15. Then man and his wife heard the sound of Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The next carol was sung by our church choir during the carol service in the year 2017. Glory to God in the highest.
God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Genesis chapter 22 verses 9 to 18. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out from him, from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. The next traditional carol was written by an Irish poet and philanthropist, Cecil Francis Alexander, in 1848, and the tune Irby was composed by Henry J. Gauntlet. Let us all sit together, once in Royal David City.
from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 and 3, and 6 and 7. The prophet foretells the coming of the Savior. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The next one is a special one where the men of our choir decided to sing an a cappella during the 2016 carol service. It's called Night Will Be As Day. reading is from the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 9. Chapter 11 verses 1 to 9. The peace that Christ will bring is foreshown. 
A shoot will come up from the stump of Jazzy. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The next traditional carol was written by the great English hymn writer Charles Wesley in the year 1739. Let us all sing together, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Gabriel salutes Mary. Luke 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The next is an anthem composed by an English composer and church organist, Caleb Simper, which was performed by our church choir in the 2018 carol service. Let us all join together to sing the carol, Break Forth into Joy.
tells the birth of Jesus. Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. The author of the next traditional carol is not definitely known, but it has been attributed to the great German reformer Martin Luther. The tune Cradle Song was composed by a Scottish composer, William J. Kirkpatrick, in 1895. Let us all sing together, Away in a Manger. The shepherds go to the manger. Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 16. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. 
Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. The next anthem is again by the English composer Caleb Simper, who was quite known for his beautiful harmonies. This was a song sung by the church choir in 2019 carol service. Peace on earth.
the wise men are led by the star to Jesus. The reading is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We, we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born, in Bethlehem, in Judea. They replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The next additional carol was written by the famous English hymn writer Isaac Watts in the year 1719. Let us all sing together everyone's favorite, Joy to the World. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and through the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. 
he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. As the 2013 carol service finale, our church choir bravely chose to sing the famous Alleluia chorus from Handel's Messiah.
we remember with gratitude George Phillips who was an integral part of the St Stephen's Church choir for several years George believed that the choir has an equally important role to play in regular Sunday worship services as on special occasions like the carol service and he was regular for the practices you may have noticed that he was a part of every carol by our choir that was presented today including last year's we remember him especially on the occasion of the carol service as george was instrumental in helping us sing joyfully to the lord and worship him through the songs of praise year after year the christmas lighting in the altar and the beautiful diffuse lighting in our church and our sound system are all a reminder of how george most silently and sincerely worked behind the scenes to bring joy to each one of us besides these he served our church in so many other different capacities as well even as we miss his physical presence with us we thank god for his life of faith we also thank god for the glorious hope that all who put their trust in the lord jesus christ will be united one day with all the saints and heavenly beings to worship the lord as singing hallelujah hallelujah a taste of which we got as we listen to the hallelujah chorus by handel's messiah king of kings and lord of lords and he shall reign forever and ever king of kings and lord of lords hallelujah hallelujah Heavenly Father, we thank you for the good news announced by your angels at the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. We pray for our city, our country and the whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for reconciliation and unity among all people. We remember the poor and the helpless, the hungry and the oppressed. the sick in body and in mind and them that mourn the lonely and the unloved the aged and the little children we pray that they would experience the love joy hope and peace that jesus christ offers to all humankind we also pray in the face of the covid-19 pandemic that you would heal the world in christ's name amen
I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the choristers, conductors, accompanists, and organists who have served the Lord at St. Stephen's over the years, enriching our regular worship services and various special occasions through their singing and music. God bless you. Thank you.